how a test with a few drops of blood can be as accurate as a test done with a vial of blood. That's a great question. I think there's a few things to think about here. First off, the blood that you draw from a finger is called capillary blood. Blood you draw from your arm or your vein is called venous blood. So every test that's run at a lab, oftentimes before they even get it ready to run, most labs will do a venous to cap study. So they take samples from an individual and they'll take the venous draw blood and then they'll take the same person, same time, draw out the capillary blood and then test them both and look for basically a correlation between results. And what you wanna see is this nice pretty line that's straight and kind of goes up at a 45 degree, which means, you know, for people who have low results all the way through to people who have high results, those dots fall on that line. And and so that correlation factor, what you're looking for is you want at least 95%. Some tests don't respond well from capillary drug blood compared to the venous blood. And so they have correlations of 90%, 80%. And so you first have to do that test to even determine if the blood from your finger can match the blood from your vein. So not all blood is equal, especially when you think of the fact that you've got some skin cells, capillary fluid and other things, gunk, I'll call it, you know, potentially getting in the way here. Once right. you've done that and you can say that, hey, capillary blood and venous blood are the same. The next question then is, can you do this with less volume of blood? And so there's been a lot of good technology advancements since the genetic testing from 23andMe was commercialized and consumerized, really drove down to two things, the price of these tests and the amount of sample that's needed to run these tests. So before, when you look at the big companies out there, they've made investments in technology stacks, you know, and, and lab testing devices that are really kind of bigger volume. They have lots of people they employ and they're really trying to drive pricing down. So they would rather work in larger volumes of blood. Their staff are not as well trained and, you know, again, no offense to anybody working there, but they pay them less than specialty labs pay their staff to do miniaturized testing. So you can bring the sample volume from one tenth of a milliliter down to, you know, one one hundredth of a milliliter or what's called microliters. And you can measure blood nowadays in 10 microliters of blood or approximately a drop, let's say a little less than a drop. And so the technology is evolving and evolving to the point where now you can do both small volume testing and finger testing. And that's what we've been spending all our efforts at iMores to make sure that not only can we do this, but we can do it repeatedly and make sure that we can do it in comparison to the results you get from a quest. Winning is exciting, but you know what? What you're winning matters even more. How about the chance to win another couple of decades of life? healthy life, understanding the cause of heart attack, stroke, dementia, the major killers and disablers, and how to prevent those. You can win these courses to do just that. How do you do that? Click the link below, watch the video, answer the questions, and the more you answer right, the better your chances of winning. Give it a try. Win things like free courses that can save your life.